Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of R3 Stem Cell. Today the topic is stem cell therapy for shoulder conditions. Traditional non-surgical treatments for the most part for, for shoulder conditions include physical therapy, anti-inflammatories, possibly pain medication, cortisone injection, a TENS unit. None of those treatments actually helps to fix the condition. Okay, now what we have now for regenerative medicine has changed the paradigm to where no more band-aid treatments, the treatments that are offered help to repair and regenerate these damaged conditions to provide long-term relief. Now what are the shoulder elements that we're talking about? Well, there's quite a few. The rotator cuff in and of itself involves four different tendons. You can see them here, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscapularis, and the teres minor. There's also a bursa, which is what kind of overlays, it's a soft tissue that overlays the muscle. Uh, cartilage, which you don't see here, it's actually inside the joint. Uh, biceps tendon, and then the labrum, which you also don't see here. Here's a study out of 2015 in rabbits, looking at regeneration of full thickness rotator cuff tendon tears after ultrasound guided injection with umbilical cord blood derived mesenchymal stem cells. So they looked at 10 rabbits uh, with full thickness subscapularis tears, which is part of the rotator cuff. And then one month after the ultrasound guided injection, seven out of 10 had already healed back to partial thickness repair. Very impressive. Looking at the effect of platelet-rich plasma on rotator cuff tendinitis symptoms, there was a study in 2013 on 18 patients who had failed cortisone injections and physical therapy for rotator cuff tendinitis. They got a single ultrasound guided injection into the uh, uh, area around the tendon, uh, resulted in safe, significant, sustained improvement of pain function and MRI outcomes. So the VAS scores went from 7.5 out of 10 down to 0.5 by three months, and it sustained for a year uh, it went down to 0.4. So very, very impressive results with just one injection. Now, rotator cuff repair, uh, surgical, we know that there's uh, significant failure rates in rotator cuff repair. It ranges from you know, around 30% up in some studies to 94%. The focus in research has changed from mechanical improvements of how to put the rotator cuff back down to the bone to finding ways to improve the biological environment around that repair so that it heals better. So conventional rotator cuff repair complemented by the aid of autologous stem cells, a study looking at 14 patients with one year follow-up after full thickness tear repair. All the patients experienced tendon integrity after a year. And after the repair, the way they did it was the stem cells were injected into the tendon borders all around the repair. And it worked. All of them healed. Here's a study out of 2014 looking at biologic augmentation of rotator cuff repair with stem cells during arthroscopy. Um, this one they looked at 45 patients. They actually quantified the amount of stem cells that these folks received at 51,000. Um, they did a bone marrow iliac crest uh, aspiration. 100% uh, of the augmented repairs healed at the six month point, while only two thirds of those healed. Um, without having the stem cell um, augmentation. So here's a study, uh, 2015, looking at 115 shoulders that were treated with bone marrow stem cells for either glenohumeral joint arthritis and or a rotator cuff tear um, or tendinitis. The pain scores decreased uh, by 50%, 4.3 to 2.4, and that was sustained uh, for a year. So you can see that um, whether it's glenohumeral joint arthritis or the rotator cuff issue, uh, stem cells biologically by themselves helped dramatically. So looking at labral tears, when you look at the joint, this is a labral tear. Labrum is the cartilage around the joint itself. The joint's not very deep, so the labrum helps to augment that and to help with stability. So there really haven't been any specific studies to date on shoulder labral tears. There have been several on knee meniscal tears, which have a very similar biologic makeup of fibrocartilage as the labrum in the shoulder. Studies in the knee 
show the possibility for avoiding surgery as well as improving surgical outcomes should it become necessary. So either as a way to avoid surgery or a way to augment the repair during surgery. In conclusion, the research on stem cell therapy for shoulders does exist, and it's been positive, but it does lag behind what we have on the knee. So far, it's shown to be beneficial for so shoulder degenerative joint disease, rotator cuff tendonitis, small tears of the rotator cuff, and we have anecdotal reports for labral tears. There's a lot of evidence showing that it helps healing after surgery. These are low-risk treatments with a high benefit likelihood. R3 wants to make a difference in patients' lives by helping them avoid surgery and remain as active as desired. Our affiliated R3 Stem Cell Centers of Excellence are located nationwide and offer first-rate regenerative treatments. So visit us online today at r3stemcell.com or just give us a call at 844-GET-STEM. We'd love to help you. Thank you very much for watching.